Hi, we are going to um, show what is important to make uh, Bebop run properly. The first thing is to yeah. make sure that you have the TWS.OCX component installed and registered on your Windows machine. I have here searched using the, the Windows Explorer I've searched for that file. If the file does not appear on your computer, you need to download it. I do offer a download link and I also offer a simple way to, to register it on your Windows machine using an, a utility program that is actually provided by Option View and is called regtws.exe. For anyone running Option View or having run Option View, even if your subscription has lapsed, has the, the TWS OCX registered on, his, or on, on the Windows machine. For all Option View users, there's nothing to do. Otherwise, I also provide, although I am not sure about distribution rights for this utility program that is essentially a shortcut for a Windows command to uh, register that OCX file on your machine. So, as you can see, this utility program RegTWS is in my option view folder. So I can just double click it and it will register the TWS.OCX file for you. If you don't want to, or if you don't have that utility program available, the best is to run a command uh, window. For that, you just, just click uh, Windows R and you type command, and this window will appear. And here you type reg server 32 for and you just type the, the file location here which is in my particular instance option view 8 and tws.ocx as you can see now the tws is now uh, registered if at any point you wish to unregister that TWS because it's no longer available, although it doesn't take much space on your disk and doesn't take any resources when it's not used, but if you do want to uh, unregister, you just type reg server slash u and the, the path to that same file. Basically, as you see, the slash u allows you to unregister the TWS. So we are not going to do it now. So now, uh, either through reg TWS or the Windows command, the TWS is properly registered. If it's properly registered, you can start the Bebop. First thing you do when you get the Bebop starting is you see this dashboard, which is the, the first page on the Bebop. And you do initiate a command to um, connect through the TWS to the IB. At the moment, my IB console is running. So let's start from scratch. I disconnect. I can even completely reset the API. So let's go for connection. Now it is connected. When it's connected, IB returns a timestamp. This is a timestamp 704, 704, it's connected, it's connected, and I do have a a message coming from the program because the program actually checks regularly whether the connection basically bebop to TWS OCX to the IB TWS if that chain is working properly. When it's connected you don't really need to come back to this um, page unless you want to have a quick look at the dashboard basically where the main indices are going uh, at the moment, we see this is a, a pre-market view. So I can see that the uh, futures ES for the September expiry is going up. So this is the close on Friday. And it does calculate a few things for you. The put IV slope, the call IV slope, and it also retrieves a number of information for more accurate pricing of options. What we do next is we click on option chain. So basically, those four buttons are only to check, reset, connect, disconnect to the IBTWS. Now let's go to the option chain. In this instance, the, the, the option chains are already configured for the September and October expiries. So you can choose to have 
to select indices, you can actually select it here or just click on the indices here and request data or you can go to the first expiries put, request data or you can also use this to select the first put. I mean using this cell or clicking on the header here is exactly the same thing. What is actually recommended for the sake of starting Bebop quickly is just to go to general page, connect and then request all market data. I have done that, so basically this is already done. That doesn't stop me from requesting it again. It will make no difference whether a market data request already been done. Okay, now it's doing the same thing again. Resetting all the empty cells. Basically, I've chosen to only look at strikes up to 10% OTM. As you can all see, there are a lot of uh, fields available to get extra, extra information for each cell. So here we have for the puts uh, for the September expiry, uh, we are uh, out of the market, pre-market data, so there's, there's no uh, information. And that's one thing you need to know about the IBTA TWS. It does not always provide the same quality of data outside market hours. So we have the spread, the bid price, the ask price, we have a mid, we have a, an IV calculated by IV, and I do attempt, even though it may not be accurate, I do attempt to extract the mid implied volatility from options price. At this point, uh, we have a little bit of a difference between what IB is calculating and what the algorithm is calculating, but uh, that's not exactly an important point right now. Now that we have for this range of strikes, and again, I'm using 25 points as uh, wide st strikes here. If you want uh, more granular, more strikes, you can just clear all data. You can populate chains using another type of, let's say, every 10 points or 10, 25, or, or even every 5 points if you wish to. At the same time, you can here select if you want to have another underlying selected. SPX, Russell, or ES. Uh, I'm not going to repopulate chains. I'm happy with what I've got. I'm happy with this amount of data. So what do we do next? We have basically nothing to do here. We can go back to the dashboard if we want to, to check um, a few things. But if we go back to the option chain, there's not much to see. We can have a look at the IV graph. Here we can see the vol smile showing up and here you can filter if you just want to see the puts. Here, here they are. Apply. Boom. So I can see the, the vol smile signs starting to show up on September. That's quite normal. We're getting closer to expir expiration. And the October is still, still very flat. I do plot a regression, polynomial regression of the second degree. As you can see, it's still very, very flat, very linear the uh, x2 factor is very small. Uh, as we get closer to expiration, the polynomial will start showing a lot more um, prominent. So let's go back to the full option chains for puts and calls. There we are. At uh, this point, I am uh, using the IB as provided by IB. I will add, uh, during this better testing period, I will add the possibility to plot either IVs or the calculated IV for, for the, the chain in question. Of course, you can only plot it for the strikes you have selected on your tickets page. Now, the next, we can hide it now. We don't actually need this all day long. Another thing here you can do on the tickets page, the program will save a snapshot every hour every hour what you've subscribed to will be saved in the same folder Bebop is located. So if I go, I mean at this time I'm only using my plain documents page as you can see this is the Bebop and I have a number of snapshots. So if Bebop is located in a subfolder or wherever you want to the snapshots will be there too. So let's for example um, cancel all market data 
although it would be done if you load a snapshot data. And let's load a snapshot data for the last close. I go here. So let's go for the close on Friday. There we are. It's all there. So we, at, at this point, you have no connection. You can basically disconnect to IB. You're working offline now. You're only using data that was saved on Friday at the close. Every piece of information here come from that snapshot. The ATM put IV or call IV here for this one is the one that was recorded at 1600 hours. Uh, so basically at the close, 4 p.m. on Friday the 17th. And here if I go to the, for the put side, 907, 9.07%. .07%. And if we check, we had... Um, it closed about 28.50 and the IV was exactly spot on 907. My own calculated IV was slightly higher though. And if you look, since we close around uh, 28.50, 911, 9.11, so it does tally. If you want to show the IV graph for that part particular snapshot, here it is. So what is the next step from here? Usually, Unless you want to go and uh, select a few things and, and calculate what would be um, a particular option uh, price, you can use this page, which is more for tutorial purposes. Um, and so you can use this uh, individual pricer. But generally, you would go to the pricer itself. Here, I have a sample position. This is a pricer page. I've got a pricer with a position that could be real or not. I mean, this is just for testing purposes. What can you do here? You can first check, okay, I have now the close on Friday, 28.50. So let's go to the pricer page. There we are. So I have a, a sample position here. I here check that it is balanced, just in case you make some mistake on your position, you know, strikes here or there. I mean, of course, you can have extra teenies in some strategies, but here we see uh, zero, which means that uh, this, this position is balanced. If you use naked puts, you will have probably a net seller position here. If you have additional teenies, you may have a, a, a net long position. But here we look at a typical market neutral position. And so what do we see here? We do see the information that comes straight off the snapshot. So for example, if I check the 27.75 for October, for October, the mid is 27.15. If I go back to here and I go for the put 27.70, 27.15, this is exactly the same, 27.15. So what does this do? It calculates uh, first the delta for the overall position. As you can see, it does not not multiply here by the multiplier. So it's just, it is a straight delta from zero to one. So this is a very, very delta negative position just for, just for testing purposes. So you have the IV that comes, as you can see here, it comes from um, the, um, from IB, but you can choose a model IV or you can choose a calculated IV. So this is the, the, the price. This is the price of that combo as a whole, regardless of previous cash flow. For any uh, exact position monitoring and management, you will need to go to the next spreadsheet, which will be described separately. So we have here the delta, the option price, and everything. Okay, what can we do here? As you can see, I can maybe adjust so let's say I want to add, um, it's just going to be, for example, this. I am going to calculate the sheet. Right, so here I would add a 0.64 delta. I mean, so I would probably add a lot of delta to this trade. But let's say I want to adjust. Let's have a look. Here is my position, and if I want to adjust, I'm, I'm going to select, okay, just select main plus the first simulation. I'm going to adjust. So let's let's have a look. 
2675, I've got one, so I propose to add one. So let's say I adjust. You can see this is the new calculation. You can see that the delta is changing. You can see the price is changing. So here you, you can decide to confirm, cancel. And if you add position that are, I mean, new strikes that, are, that come in between, you can decide to sort position. It will sort everything back from lower to higher. So I'm going to cancel here and goes back to the former position. If you confirm this, to make sure you do not uh, add a, an adjustment twice, if you confirm, these uh, quantities will be reset to zero. A few uh, additional tools. We, you can here go for historical and you can download. I have put on a, a few lines. I mean, they are actually outdated because they were for the, 20, uh, for the August expiration. Here you, do, you, you can select, for example, I want to have so the 21st of September, let's say I want to download one month of data, the midpoint here on a five minute chart. I just request historical data here. It's processing it. You can choose to create a new workbook. So you can activate. Oh, so let's, let's, there you are. For this particular strike, I do have both a new tab added for it. And it also creates, so if I go back to here, I do have a separate spreadsheet containing all this historical data for me. I've, I've decided to have one month of data in, in, on five minute bar. So if you want to check the an individual option, I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's just, it is now either on, on a separate tab or on a separate spreadsheet. You can maybe want to, to plot how the, the, that option behaved in the last month. On this, I don't really need it, need it here. And at the same time, I have actually saved it in a separate spreadsheet. So let's go back to historical data. Um, you also have a watch list if you want to. Uh, be careful if you want to use real-time bars for a watch list. Um, IB may um, charge you a small fee for each request. But if you want to have a, a live data, but we, for indices, you already have it for uh, using streaming data that, that is free. It's maybe for additional symbols that you do not have on the existing tickers page. At this point, only stream data for the two indices, the futures and the VIX. Right, that's it for now. On this short video, I wanted to show you how to install and just a basic walkthrough for Bebop. Um, on the next one, I will go into more depth and I will show you how it is used in the other spreadsheet called uh, Options Matrix. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.